Welcome back to Space Cadets. Let's just see uh, how they're getting on there. Making a bit of a mess by the looks of things. Anyway, uh, they still haven't called the bluff, but they're all getting closer and closer to the truth. Oh, I'm having fun. Cosmonaut Kerry and our man on the inside, Charlie, are talking in the lab. What, do you, what are you sort of hoping for from this? What do you mean? This whole experience. Just the experiences, that's all. Because these are like your memories for life, aren't they? I'm nervous if we get to do a space walk, though. I'm scared of, like, a, three, a free fall. No, I'm sure it'll be all right. Yeah. They seem quite competent. Don't you find it strange that we're travelling at 28,000 yeah. miles an hour? Or it just feels hour. like we're on a train. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? We could just be in a simulator at the moment, and we pull up the shutters and there's just actually a picture. <laughs> it, it's not real to me at the moment. Is yeah, that how you I mean, feel? Well, it's just little moments. It's, it's kind of your brain plays tricks, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, you, we know where we are. Yeah. But then there's just, every so often, you, you, you know, you just think, oh, I'm on a train. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and then, you know, then you look down and see the Earth. And you yeah. go, oh, whoop. My God. Oh, I'm actually yeah. in space. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe there's like, thrusters behind. I know. You know. I, would, I just want to see Plus the it whole. Payload bay. Yeah, I want to see it whole from the outside to see because all we've seen yeah. is the front. I, I have no idea what the rest of it looks like. I know we were shown like some diagrams, but yeah. I just can't remember them now. Well, we could see that there was an image in the when we looked through. We could see on, when the pilots were looking at sort of mm. the, the shuttle shape. Yeah, yeah. So that was quite. Yeah. That was something. But you know, it's like we have to pick up little bits and bobs yeah. and put them together and yeah, make our brains have to put out, the whole yeah. thing together and make sense of it. Mm. There's a funny thing, I think in the back of their minds, something is, their, their, their physical sensations of it are trying to tell them something, but their minds aren't willing to accept it because, you know, their reality is so carefully constructed around them. Inside, their body is registering the fact that they haven't physically moved. It feels strange because I know that we're in space, but part of me just feels like I'm on a train. Oh, in, I said in exactly the same thing. Really? Yeah, not a train, but I just said, I, I said we're floating around space in orbit, we're mm. going around the world. I said, mm -hmm. other than that, it just feels like we're in this sort of futuristic cabin yeah. sort of thing. Like. Yeah. Yeah. But we'd be sitting in here for days and you would not even know you were in space. In space. Yeah. We were saying when we first got in here, it'd be funny if like a. Uh, it was outside, someone was going like this. <laughs> Push on the outside of the fact. I, mean, right. and then I, think, they, I think they'd be uh, in a lot of pain. Yeah, and then for a very there. short for a very short time. Well, and then you'd, hear, you'd hear them say, "John, get us a burger." Or something like that. <laughs> Pass us that drink or something. Yeah, 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 a good job to have <laughs> that would be a funny. space rocker. <laughs> that would be uh, something else to see. No quite. Is that like they, a, they'd be, like an they'd official job? At NASA. Is that an contest? official job at NASA? A space rocker. A space rocker. I think everybody deep down is a space rocker. There we go. This time it's Kerry who uh, hits the nail pretty much on the head, saying that the shuttle might well be a simulator. Now, I expect people at home are screaming, so why don't you come out with it? Confront the pilots. Maybe it's because she doesn't want the dream to end. One thing's for sure, there is no shame in being taken in by a simulator. That's what simulators are meant to do, to simulate, meaning the same as. Uh, here's an experiment, actually, you can all do. I discovered it on the way uh, back to London, driving back. I wasn't driving. Uh, but next time you're a passenger in a car, and this is why I wasn't driving, lean against the window, close your eyes, uh, and just kind of feel the vibrations and the noises. And so just take in the sensations that are happening. And ask yourself, is it possible I'm in a simulator and not a real car? Certainly for me, the answer was yes, it's possible. The steady vibration jolts for deacceleration and acceleration, the sound of the engine. Just a selection of sensations. It could be a car or a simulator. So, if it's not unreasonable to think that the real thing might be a simulator, why is it so strange for someone to think that a simulator might be the real thing? Ah. OK. Did I sound like tomorrow's world, then? A little bit. OK, back to the shuttle and time for a workout. Here we go. <laughs> Cosmonaut Paul has been working out for 10 minutes now and has some questions for the flight commander about his energy levels. How come I can't do so many sit ups and push ups? Because on Earth, I can do legs. Well, is this something to do with the speed that we're travelling at? Well, it is, it is probably to do with the fact, quite simply, that you are tired. 
Is it? The atmosphere is exactly the same. We have simulated it perfectly. Maybe because there is less oxygen no in here and there is a higher quality of uh, quantity of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Is that why we've fallen over? So why You've been falling over. Yeah, we're not falling over, but... Uh, you should. You're falling over because this ship is uh, moving aft and fore. I've got to do ten more push-ups as well. I'm doing them. I'll, I'll count you through them. Come on, we, let's go. One, two, three. All right, ready? And four. Nine. Come on, you've got to get to ten. Ten, four. Ten, four. Five. That's good. Six. Seven. Seven. Come on, you could, that wasn't one. Eight. No. <laughs> it is eight. I'll see eight when I see eight. Come on. That's eight. There. Oh. Nice and slow. Come on. Let's go oh. down. Nine, just two more. Nine oh. and a half. Nine and three quarters. Oh. No, you've got to get up from there. Come on. Failure is not an option. I want to see one more, otherwise it's not ten. Breathing. You do your breathing. Yeah. You breathe out on the push-up, okay? Breathe in on the way down, out on the push-up. Breathe it up. That's right. You breathe it up. Well done. Ten. That is unbelievable. Why? We get less fit up in space. You're fine. There's a saying, not uh, not all should be carried away by the wind, not all should be swept away by the broom. Ah. It should all be leveled, it should out. All be leveled out very soon. Ten minutes later, and Charlie's all alone in the lab. Charlie's a cheeky chappy, isn't he? But don't worry, Paul gets his own back later. OK, earlier we saw Paul and Billy recording an advertisement for chip-off aspirins. Chip-off aspirins. Fast-acting pain relief from the top of your head to the balls of your feet. Chip-off aspirins. Well, the boys obviously caused quite a stir within the Russian advertising industry because now they want all the cadets punting their non-existent products. I understand where you're coming from. All four of our cosmonauts have been called to the lab by Mission Control and told that they must record three promotional trails for fictional Russian television and radio stations. We will go for record in five, four, three, two, one, action. Hi, we're the first civilian crew on Earth Orbital One and you're watching KL2, Russia's only gymnastics channel. Thank you, cosmonauts. You have now successfully recorded your advertisement for the KL2 Gymnastics Channel. Hands on my head. <laughs> Would cosmonauts please stand in a line? So it's like his hand growing out of my head. Without moving your feet unduly, could cosmonauts dance a little? Is this just for their benefit? <laughs> we don't move your feet that much. And continue dancing as you do your line. Uh, Ready in five, four, three, two, one, action. Hi, we're the first civilian crew on Earth Orbital One, and we are loving this funky tune. Thank you, cosmonauts. You have now successfully recorded your advertisement for Radio Boutical Moscow. <laughs> Radio oh, that's Boutical. Cool. <laughs> that's. <laughs> Cosmonaut Kerry, can you make a gun with your fingers? A gun. Point it at the head of Cosmonaut Charlie. Like, like that. Like that. Yeah. Facing the camera a little bit. Do, do it with that. With that. I see. Like that. Cosmonaut Charlie, can you? 
pretends to be cutting the throat of cosmonaut Paul. What kind of sick Matt, channel Matt, is this? Matt, she wrote? <laughs> what am I got to? Cosmonaut Kerry, with your free hand, can you uh, pretend to strangle cosmonaut Billy? Ready to record in five, four, three, two, one, action. Hi, we're the crew on Earth Orbital One, and next on KVP4, Murder She Wrote. <laughs> Thank you, cosmonauts. You have now good. successfully recorded your advertisement trail for KVP4, Murder She Wrote. There we go, virtual fame in a virtual world. Well, of course, they've got real fame, I suppose, in a real world, but they must kind of suss it out there, must they? They must think. Ooh. Anyway, a great trail for murder she wrote there. Perhaps they'll get to do the one for Last of the Summer Wine next. I'd love to see the shuttle careering out of control down a Yorkshire Dale, towing a bath or a pram or something. Hilarious. Certainly set the mood nicely for Songs of Praise. Anyway, time for another break. When we come back, I'm going to do something, uh, yeah, a bit odd. I'm going to go into the back of the shuttle and have a chat with Charlie and cosmonaut Drew Dawson. Risky.